What's up, everyone? Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Pros, bringing you my top 10 waiver wire ads for week 13. But before we get started, I have a contest winner to announce. And the winner of the autographed T. Higgins Cincinnati Bengals jersey, courtesy of pristineauction.com, is Astro Mope. Please get in touch with our customer support agents at mailbag at fantasypros.com with your mailing address and proof of your subscription to the Fantasy Pros channel, and we will get that jersey shipped out to you. Again, the winner is Astro Mope. Congratulations. And now, let's go ahead and get started with a new giveaway. If you want a chance to win a signed Justin Jefferson Minnesota Vikings jersey, courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video, and that's it. Make sure to turn on notifications to know when new videos drop and to find out if you've won. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 10, Elijah Moore. Let's keep expectations in check here. Mike White only threw the ball 28 times and 25% of that went to the running backs. So I doubt there's going to be any change in philosophy with the Jets. This is still a low volume pass team. But the difference is, White has been far more efficient, and that bodes well for the receiving group as a whole. Elijah Moore caught both of his two targets for 64 yards and a touchdown on Sunday, his first touchdown of the season. Moore fell out of favor, but his snap count has been rising, and he seems to be regaining Robert Sala's trust. Garrett Wilson is the clear lead in this offense, but if Mike White continues to bring more stability to the offense... Moore's opportunities could continue to grow, and he can reclaim the wide receiver two role in this offense. Number nine, Jamichael Hasty. Travis Etienne left Sunday's game with a foot injury. Travis Etienne says he's fine, and that's the extent of the information that we have. But we all know that a player saying he's fine doesn't mean that he won't miss next week. Daryl Henderson was a healthy scratch with this being his first week with the team. If this was a long-term injury, I might lean towards prioritizing Henderson because we've never seen Jamichael Hasty command high usage on the ground. But Henderson is not familiar with the system yet, and Hasty has short-term upside. If ETN misses Week 13, Hasty could be a top 24 back because the Jags face Detroit. And while Detroit has made significant improvements on defense, it's still a good matchup for running backs. Hasty is a solid start if ETN is out next week. Number eight, Jamison Williams. I'd temper expectations for a rookie that has spent the beginning of his NFL career rehabbing a major injury, but given the extreme talent level for Williams, I am more than willing to make an exception for him. And the main reason I'll make an exception is there is space within this offense for Williams to carve out an immediate role. Amon Ross St. Brown is the clear wide receiver one, and that's not going to change. But after that, it is wide open in the Lions receiving core. DJ Chark, Khalif Raymond, and Josh Reynolds can be displaced if Williams can make even just a mild impact. If you're fighting to make the playoffs, I'd probably lean towards other waiver wire ads that can contribute to your playoff push next week. But if you are locked in, Williams could make an impact for a playoff run. Number seven, Nico Collins. At this point, I feel comfortable declaring Nico Collins as the wide receiver one for the Houston Texans. Collins caught six of nine targets for 44 yards on Sunday. It's truly a shame that the Texans are so terrible because Collins is coming into his own. Collins is averaging over eight targets a game since returning from his injury. He just lacks upside to get to that 20 plus fantasy point range but he does have a solid floor around 10 fantasy points. And the Texans have a very pass-friendly schedule in the playoffs where Collins could have some appeal as a flex option. He is worthy of a bench stash. Number six, Sky Moore. If you just look at the fantasy points, you'd say there's no reason to add Sky Moore this week. But when you look beyond the fantasy points, you can see that it is very possible that Moore has some late season breakout potential. This week, Travis Kelsey led the team in targets, of course, but it was Moore that tied for second in targets, catching five of his six targets for 36 yards. He did fumble, but he'll continue to work through those rookie mistakes. The only downside here with Moore is that the remaining Kansas City schedule is ugly for receivers. But when your quarterback is Patrick Mahomes, 
we can overlook bad matchups for potential upside. Number five, Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams is the only Rams running back with upside. Cam Akers hasn't caught a pass since week two, and with no pass catching upside and an offense that doesn't provide a lot of goal line opportunities, reaching double digit fantasy points is extremely hard. On the other hand, Williams is seeing work on the ground and through the air, and while his upside is definitely limited, it is certainly higher than anything Akers can offer. Williams had 11 carries for 35 yards and three receptions for 25 yards on Sunday. And the Rams' upcoming schedule is insanely running back friendly. It would make sense organizationally to use the remainder of the season to increase work for Williams and see if Williams is someone that the Rams can trust as a lead back heading into 2023. Number four, Zonovan Knight. Michael Carter left Sunday's game with an ankle injury, and while it doesn't sound like a severe injury, there is reason to be concerned. And it is going to be a headache trying to figure out the right way to approach this backfield because we have very little information and a variety of factors to consider. The leading back in terms of volume was Zonovan Knight with 14 carries for 69 yards and three receptions for 34 yards. Ty Johnson was technically the more productive back with a smaller quantity of carries, but I'm not opposed to taking a stab at Knight to see if the rookie can win some favor with Robert Sala after such a solid outing. James Robinson was a healthy scratch. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Robinson isn't actually the next man up. The Jets likely saw this as an opportunity to limit his usage. There are conditions around the pick they traded for him and yardage that Robinson actually gets throughout the season. So it's possible they just saw this as an opportunity to give the majority of the workload to Carter and save some yardage for Robinson. So I wouldn't count Robinson out. But Knight receiving a strong workload plus receiving work makes him very interesting. Depending on what information we get on Monday around Michael Carter, Knight could move up or down this list. Number three, Zay Jones. Zay Jones has been on my waiver wire list multiple times and is a frequent favorite of mine in deep waiver ads. And the reasoning has always been the same. Jones is the clear wide receiver two in an offense that has to push high volume often. Jacksonville has two pass friendly matchups coming up against Detroit and Tennessee. And while the playoff schedule is ugly, that could actually be a good thing for Jones. The matchups in weeks 15 through 17 are Dallas, the New York Jets, and Houston, all teams that feature a top tier cornerback that might be focused on specifically Christian Kirk. That could open things up for Jones similar to what we saw on Sunday. Jones has had double digit targets in the past two games. When he sees volume, he makes the most of it. He is worthy of a roster. Number two, Van Jefferson. I'm not going to lie. I feel a little gross throwing multiple Rams onto the waiver wire list this week, but I am left with no choice. Daryl Henderson was cut and now Allen Robinson is out for the season. The Rams offense has literally dwindled down to nothing. Someone has to catch passes in this offense and the only man left is Van Jefferson. So I will finally yield to adding Jefferson. Now, buyer beware. This is not a league winner waiver wire pickup. Matt Stafford is still week to week after experiencing numbness in his legs following his concussion, and the Rams are out of playoff contention. They have zero incentive to rush him back before he is 100% okay. So it could be Bryce Perkins at the helm again next week, and Jefferson caught just three of seven targets for 29 yards and a touchdown this week. So upside is limited and the Rams upcoming schedule is more run friendly, but we cannot pass up the opportunity to get a team's wide receiver one. And that's exactly what Jefferson is now. Number one, Traylon Burks. I am yet again making a 1% exception for Traylon Burks. I like to keep this list under 50% rostered, but I have been giving one person a pass if they are at or just above 50% rostered and there is significant upside. There are other guys that are around 50% or right above that are worthy of inclusion, but 
Burks led the Titans receiving core for the second week in a row with four receptions on six targets for 70 yards and a touchdown, and he could be trending towards a late season rookie breakout. Now, there was a bit of luck involved because that touchdown was actually a huge Derrick Henry run and Henry fumbled in the end zone and Burks jumped on the ball. But hey, when you do things the right way and hustle, good things happen. So heads up plays do count for something. And I know the coaching staff sees that. Regardless, this was another solid week in a difficult matchup. And while next week against Philadelphia is no layup, Burks has three excellent matchups weeks 14 through 16 where he can be a solid flex play. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, if you want a chance to win a signed Justin Jefferson Minnesota Vikings jersey courtesy of our friends at Pristine Auction, you need to subscribe to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel right now. Comment below on this video and that's it. Make sure to turn on notifications to know when new videos drop and to find out if you've won. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros, so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.